and uh, hopefully you are in the uh, right session. This is the optical, no, newcomers, right? Okay. <laughs> and uh, this is not the official opening, but just kind of a uh, sneak peek of what uh, is to come and a little background on Manog. So uh, welcome to Charlotte. I don't think I pressed that, but that's okay. Uh, there it is, North American Network Operators Group. Again, welcome. So what is Nanog? Uh, it's a community-driven nonprofit organization. Uh, we have dated back to 1987 when Merit was uh, tasked with re-engineering and managing the uh, National Science Foundation that <clears throat> our original charter was formed in 1994. And then in 2011, uh, we decided to uh, have independence from uh, Merit. Nanog was the first and is still the largest North uh, American network operators group. Sorry, network operators group. So what does Nanog do? Uh, typically, what you think when you relate to uh, Nanog, there's three conferences a year that uh, we have a lot of educational programs that share content from things ranging from routing, optical, security, best practices, and we aim to help educate the community, both for people that are established as well as people that are new to the industry, all the new service providers that you see up and coming within the uh, area. <clears throat> we also like to provide mentoring, again, for the next generation of networking professionals. And then we're looking to empower those uh, supporting internet access in the underserved communities across North America. And I'm sure if you guys have seen, there's a lot of funding from the government in a lot of the rural areas to provide broadband access. We actively encourage diversity, inclusion, and collaboration within the community. Our community uh, comprises of 13,000 plus uh, industry professionals as well as students. We have roughly on average 900 plus attendees uh, to Nanon conferences. And usually there's about 200 plus that are first time. I mean, I'm counting here, there's quite a bit. Um, actually, raise of hands, and I know that there's some people that here are uh, not their first time, but how many are actually first timers here? That's a good amount. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, plus there's, International. So even though it is North America, you'll find a lot of folks here that come uh, internationally. Here are a bunch of NANOG resources. So not only do we like to have things here within the conference, but then we like to take things uh, further. So these slides are going to be available uh, on the agenda, but these are a bunch of different resources to look after the fact. So what is a NOG, a network operator group? It is the uh, community and an organization committed to supporting local and regional uh, internet professionals. We're guided the principles of an open exchange of knowledge and expertise, as you see throughout this conference, even though we do have sponsors, all the talks, all the sessions are vendor neutral. We're formed by network operators, engineers, and other experts in, in the community. And if you see, you look at people's badges, you say hi, you'll see lots of names that you're familiar with, as well as other ISPs, other organizations, some enterprises, some uh, uh, colleges, education. So a great mix of this. And then at the end of the day, our efforts here are to improve the quality and the availability of the internet within our region. <clears throat> One may ask, well, what, what's so special about NOG? I mean, again, it's a community. Right now, we're at the North America Network Operators Group, and we're driven by individuals, not corporations. Um, again, we're based upon education, trying to educate everyone here, as well as provide really in-depth technical presentations. If you look at our conferences versus some of the other ones, you'll find really deep technical content. And again, they're local. Even though we say here for North America, if you look at it, there's a bunch of other uh, NOGs, NINOG, BOSNOG, SHINOG, and VNOG, and then you'll see a lot of NOGs, right? Network user groups. So 
it's a community that's brought together either by locality or by, we'll call it a, um, we'll call it a vertical. Like right now, if you look at this, a lot of this is service providers. Nugs, you may see that, and that's a lot of enterprises. But again, it's a form of community. Um, usually it's just to get together, change of information, all to proceed as future. And then how can you benefit from a, a NOG? Again, I, I've harped on this once or twice already, but learn best practices from experienced industry professionals. Uh, obtain knowledge and training on the latest internet technologies, as well as discuss current issues and challenges faced by the community. I'm sure as you've already walked around this morning, you see people in the hallway, there's a couple out there that are just probably talking about either something that they just discovered or a current problem that they're trying to resolve. Also, you'll find a lot of people doing business, right? Uh, we have the, and I'll get to this later, but the peering forum, um, which is the next bullet point. So some, some interesting facts here. There's uh, roughly just under 400,000 people that are employed in the field of networking operations, yet there's probably at right around 10% that are unfilled today, according to Indeed.com. Uh, and each year, that increases by about 19,000. So there is a need for this. And one thing that we are trying to do is get the next generation involved and interested in networking. So Nana Governance. I did introduce myself earlier. My name is Vincent Cylindro. I'm the current vice chair on the board of Nanog, uh, and my day job is for Juniper Networks. Here is the current board of directors and the roles. I see some of them here, <laughs> one of them here. Um, and uh, the board of directors are elected uh, by the community. Other than uh, Stephen Plote, he is ex officio because he is actually chair of the program committee who has put together, curated this entire uh, conference for the content. And then here is the staff of uh, Nanog. If you see them in the hallway, say hi, ask any questions. Ask any questions of uh, any of the board of directors or any of the staff. Be glad to point you into any direction. As well as there's a lot of, uh, we'll call it uh, very tenured folks that have been attending Nanog for a while. Uh, I think there are a few of them here as well. Please raise your hand. Anyone who, uh, you know, again, have any questions, feel free to ask these folks. So there is a bunch of uh, NANA uh, committees. We have the program committee, as I mentioned. This is the committee that takes in uh, submissions for talks, reviews them, helps uh, polish them. And then again, these are the folks that have put all those talks together. And this is what you'll see throughout the next three days. We have the audit committee. Since we do have some fiduciary responsibility, they make sure that no one's doing anything odd. Compensation committee, self-explanatory. Uh, we have a DE&I uh, committee, as I mentioned, we're committed to diversity, equity, inclusion. We have education, elections, hackathon, mentorship, and uh, a scholarship committee, which we're still looking at on, the, on that last one. And the reason why I bring up these committees is um, I know that I asked earlier, raise of hands, uh, who is a newcomer? Out of those newcomers, is anyone joined as a member slash newcomer? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and the reason why I bring that up is uh, every February meeting, we have committee appointments. So if you're interested in being in any of those several communities that I listed earlier, uh, please consider volunteering your time on a committee. And you need to be a member to be on one of those committees. So that's the reason why I ask. It's a great way to get involved. Uh, and it, it goes both ways, right? As far as when I first uh, joined on the program committee, not only was I volunteering my time, but then I also gained a lot of uh, <clears throat> knowledge and uh, retrospect 
as far as what I learned from looking at these different talks and then again, interacting with the other volunteers. So the program committee, again, as we kind of say, the, the heart of the NANOG experience. <clears throat> They're made up of industry professionals, the PC, as we call it, is selected by the board. Uh, the PC self-organizes and selects its own leadership. Again, currently, it's Stephen Plout. Uh, they review the talks, as I had mentioned, that are submitted by NANOG community, as well as others within the industry. Within the program committee, there's a couple subcommittees, keynote speakers. We have two of them this week. We have moderators, you'll see them introducing and then doing Q&A during the talks. We also have lightning talks, so if anyone's interested in giving a short, under five minute talk, please look at submitting that. And then we also have tutorials and tracks where, again, kind of joked about doing the Optical 101, but that's one of the tutorials that we've seen that has been very popular. There is the mentorship program. So one of the key things that we've been trying to do here at NANOG is build this internet of tomorrow and help engage again, either uh, folks that are new to the industry or those that are still just starting out. You know, mentorship is an essential component of professional development and it's not only within the technical aspect. Everyone in their career needs to learn skills that may not be directly technology related. And those are the other things that we're helping to uh, get out of the mentorship program. Our goal here is to have mentors and mentees. We try to pair them up during the NANA conference because always in person usually carries a lot more benefit. But again, that doesn't mean that that's the only way. We have a lot of mentor mentees that have relationships that have just been virtual and have been very successful. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. So to support our efforts of diversity, equity, inclusion, we have partnered with DEI consultants uh, to provide uh, independent ombuds, and there are both of them over on my left. <laughs> I was about to say stage. <laughs> so <laughs> the ombuds are uh, on site during the event and can be uh, reached via email. In addition, they provide reports to the board and community on our DEI progress, and you'll see some of that progress during the uh, actual conference opening. And there's the email for the ombuds. So DEI activities at uh, NANOG. In looking to support DEI uh, efforts, we've created table topics. You'll see that on the agenda there is a uh, DEI lunch. And we're also looking at having various speakers. So if you know anyone, uh, please uh, contribute and uh, pass the information along. There was a women in tech uh, mixer yesterday that was uh, very successful. There were about 30 plus folks that had attended that. And that's kind of surprising given uh, Super Bowl Sunday as well as the Sunday before the actual conference opening. So that is very good. And then also there's uh, various affinity groups. We've had things like walking in the morning, uh, choose your favorite beverage <laughs> affinity group, as well as things like uh, yoga and knitting. Pickleball, Pickleball which uh, was canceled this morning due to inclement weather. <laughs> so NANOG 90 in Charlotte. Uh, we have 33 talks uh, ranging from automation, BGP, RPKI, monitoring, uh, Python, and then coherent optics. Tutorials, as I mentioned, uh, Monday there's traffic engineering for those that are interested. Uh, Tuesday we have Google GNOI operation, and then Wednesday whiteboarding. And again, like I mentioned, not everything here, the majority of the topics here at NANOG are technical based, but again, whiteboarding is a great skill that we all need when we try to explain things, right? 
<clears throat> Our two keynotes, we have Rob Shakir from Google and Mark Johnson. And then socials, uh, we have the networking lunch, uh, peering coordination forum, as I mentioned, uh, and then there's the Nanog social today, and then there's another social tomorrow. If you uh, haven't, there is a link on the agenda to register for tomorrow's social. Uh, as the folks here mentioned up front, pickleball, weather permitting, uh, there's the DEI lunch, uh, the networking lunch, and then uh, everyone's favorite on Tuesday is the beer and gear. Um, and again, the sponsored social there. And if the weather keeps up, uh, or lightens up, Wednesday we'll have pickleball in the morning. So getting involved on a broader scale, as I mentioned, uh, I know the majority here are newcomers, but if you do feel that you want to contribute, become a member so that you can vote, be a mentor for those others in the community, and again, just teach, right? Or present uh, any topic that you feel is something that the rest of the community should know about. The, uh, the last thing there is be a sponsor or ask your company to be a sponsor. You know, we rely on sponsors. Again, we're mentor neutral, but we all know how this works. Um, and that's the way that we keep things rolling. So I know I went through that quickly, but I wanted to give you guys a couple minutes to talk in the hallway before the actual conference opens grab some coffee, but I will be around if there's any questions. So thank you very much.